מסכת בו מציע דף ס"ד עמוד א' in the bottom of the page ס"ד עמוד א' in the bottom of the page אוקיי ס"ד עמוד א' and good morning to all our אוקיי, so בואו נציע סמך דל דמוד א', תשאיר אז לאילו נשמע סובי מורי מנחם בן עקיבא, רוס בס שלום סור בס מוישה, and לרפואה ספינים לך בס גאול האוכל, בסוך שער אביבה בס דבוירו, בסוך שער חולי ישראל. סמך דל דמוד א', in bottom of the page, we started talking about it yesterday, and I mean last week, we'll continue now. עומר אבייה, four lines from the bottom of the page. עומר אבייה. Inish, a man is allowed to Inish to tell his friend zuzi, take those four zuzim take the four zuzim and get me I'm interested in buying for those four zuzim a barrel of wine so far so good although the the money doesn't really buy you metatolin Toisfus points out that there was also meshicha right? He actually, Mamash did Meshicha to the Chovis. So I would say it's a full Kenyan money, Meshicha. Everything is good. However, the condition imposed at the time of the Mechira is different. It says, If the wine goes bad, if the wine goes sour, then it will be yours, says who? The buyer to the seller. <laughs> Which means, if After a while, the wine goes bad, then it's not a deal. Even past the due date, let's say in today's uh, society, yeah? In other words, if anything goes bad with the wine, it's not a deal. And you, the seller, will have to absorb the loss. It will be like yours. It's not a deal. If anything goes later, it's not a deal. It will be your achrayas to get back the bad wine and get me back the money. And the seller is going to go bad? That will go back to the seller. No, it was pulled already. I said it was Mashiach. It was pulled into the cone, into the buyer. And yet the buyer is making a very, very funny condition here, right? That if it goes bad, and it's not even your fault, you, the seller, still it's not going to be a deal. And talk for Bil Shuscha, and it's going to be yours to um, to, to suffer. Iyokro, people, people, people. Iyokro, yeah, there was, before the Mashiach, right? Say no. However, if it will be expensive, or if it's going to be cheap, if it gets higher price or lower price, I'll either gain if it gets more expensive, or I'm going to lose if it will be, if it will get cheaper, then it will be my loss. Then it's okay to make such a deal. No ribis is mentioned. Yeah, it's just a very bad deal for who? For the seller, right? Because he's willing to take the fluctuation of the price to the buyer. But if anything goes bad, the wine goes bad, and it's not even the Moichah's fault, then we say that it's going to be, yeah, not a deal. That's a very bad deal, it's, yeah, for, for, the, for, the, for the seller. Amal Rav Shravi Le'abaye, Rav Shravi told Abaye, if so, I think this is ribis. Why is this ribis? He says, hi, this case, you know this case is like? Koiv l'sochor v'rochok l'hef said who? This is the case of something which is closer to, to be sachar, to be a sachar, a, a gain, a profit for the buyer. And Rochok Lehef said, and it's unlikely, it's a far-fetched thing, he's going to lose. And that's bad news, which means, who? Which means, the story is as follows. Such a deal, the Gemara will tell us later on, that there are four versions of a deal. Sometimes it's very good for one side, sometimes it's very good for the other side, sometimes it's bad, bad for both, sometimes it's good for both. Lemay said, this version of the case is what? The one who's clearly winning here, is who? The buyer. <laughs> the buyer says that this is not really a deal. What's the whole idea of Kenyan, as we learned many, many times? Kenyan means it's set in stone. It's a done deal. <laughs> you take it for good faith. Whether later on it's going to go better or not, it's your, it's your problem, Mr. Buyer, right? Masha'enken, yeah, as opposed to if you, yeah, Masha'enken, if you say that in this case it's not a done deal, why? If it's going to go bad, what is it going to be? It's not a deal. You call that a sale? I don't call that a sale. 
So he basically gave him money. The seller gave the, the, the buyer gave the seller money. I assume the seller really, really needs one thing called money. And that's why he's willing to go to such a crazy deal in which it's not a set thing. Yeah, he may lose. If anything goes bad, the 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 seller's taking a price. Why is the seller doing this, do you think? Because really the seller is actually the seller is yeah, the seller is one second. Again, let's review the question. Rav Shravi is, is asking about as follows. Since this is such a bad deal, it's really a bad deal. Why? There are three optional things here, right? Three uh, predictions, three forecasts. If the wine goes bad, that's a crazy part of it. We say that it's the seller's achrayas, and the seller will get the wine back. Yeah, even if it went bad before what we call the due date, yeah, the, the expiry date, okay? The seder. Now, comes the other option. If it gets expensive, I'll gain, says who? The buyer. If it gets cheap, I will I will lose. I'm buying now four Zuzim. Maybe it will come three Zuzim. It's my loss. That loss I'm willing to absorb. So you say, well, that's of course, that's a non-statement. It's not so simple. The Gemara and the many really thinks that's not, that's not a deal. Such a bad deal of not sealing the, the, the stamp on it, of not saying it's a done deal. And if it goes back, then if it goes bad, it goes back. That's not called a sale. So what is it? It's like Alva. It's like Alva. Really, the one, the guy with the wine needs the cash so badly, he's willing to take Alva. Thank you very much. And the fact that now, in case that it will be expensive, instead of four, who hopes it will become six, eight, ten, the buyer? That's like Ribis. Exactly. We don't view it as the Mecca Humemka, view it as Ribis. And the fact that he will gain something, the buyer, who's like really a lender, buyer slash lender is a very common. Uh, a toxic cocktail we've seen many times. Yeah, the buyer's like a lender, really. Giving money, it's more like halvo. And really, what's going to happen? He hopes it's going to go high. That's ribis. It's not ribis, the oraisa, possibly, because it's derech mecha chumemka, as Tursi says later on. But Lamaisa, this is like ribis, and that should not be good. And why do you allow that, Abaye? Happy? Yes, that's your question. Omer le, answers Abaye, we're in Dam Daf Samichdal Adomut Beis. Omer Lay, the top of the page, Samachdal Domut Beis, Omer Lay answers the battle of Shavia. He says, Kevin Mekabel Alei Zoilo, because there's one point, like you were saying, because there's one point out of the three, which is if it gets cheap, then really the one who will absorb it will be the, the, the buyer. Korv Lezevilazehu. That's considered as 50 50 and it is considered a sale. Let me explain. Out of the two, although it sounds very, very crazy in the Chinami, well, Lamaise, if you break it down to numbers, if you break it down and get the drama out of the story, Lamaise, there are two bad predictions. Two bad things are likely to happen to the wine. The wine will go bad or the wine will go cheap. I don't know statistically what's more common. Things don't get so cheap usually. And also things, I don't know, they may go bad. Lamaise, at the end of the day, because there is a sad that if it goes cheap, then who suffers? The buyer. Yeah. And if it goes bad, the one that's losing is the seller. Lamai is a 50-50. If it's going to be a gain, that's a different story. But out of both losses, out of the two potential losses, then one would be for the buyer, one for the seller, if it goes bad or goes cheap. So mathematically speaking, Lamai is out of the two boxes of the bad prediction, one is good, one is bad. Therefore, that's called korv lezeh ulezeh, or korv lezechar ulezeh. Or you can say, alternatively, because the guy, the buyer, has two options, it will become expensive, it will become cheap. Yeah, so he has one one gain, one loss. Korv lezeh lezeh. It's close for gaining, and it's close to to losing. Mimela, that's considered as crazy as it is. Lemaise, a, it was done derech mekach omemkar. It wasn't done through alvo. It was done like a B, lemaise, at the end of the day, the gain and loss mitzad the buyer seller are at the end of the day equal, and therefore we says a buyer we're willing to forgo and forgive and forget about what the fact that there is one crazy condition here. And that is that if it goes bad, it will go back to the to the to the to the seller. That is not. But Lamaisa, you can't say that's complete halvo and it's not mechira and it's so bad because it's carved all sachar in all hefsed. It's not true. It's not like one guy's only winning, the other one's only losing. Also, the buyer who is obviously twisting his arm, Lamaisa, there is a way for him to lose. There's a way for, for him to gain. Yeah, and 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 also the other side may lose. He may lose if it gets cheaper. So it's not all gain for Mr. Buyer. And therefore, it still falls under a kosher mechira, and it's fine. 
By the way, this is part of his tugi, which we'll see later on, and then we'll elaborate more. This is more is like you know a bit out of the context tishtekel. Yes, I'm uh, hearing questions now before we start in the Mishnah. Okay. So just to polish what we said before, and thank you for your questions, the, the, the point is as follows. It's not a complete joke. It's not a non-sale. Because at the end of the day, the buyer will come home, and instead of four zoos, there are chances, yeah, he's going to see all of a sudden that the wine prices in the market have plummeted to one, and he'll still be stuck with the wine, right? So for that, in that respect, there was a deal. It was a done deal. He can't go back under any condition. Therefore, it's a sale. It's a deal. I. what about the fact that if it goes bad and it goes back to the original buyer, even the original seller, even without Nekachtos, that's a condition in the sale. But it's not a non-sale. It's not a shtut, it's not a nothing. They're very good. Baruch Hashem. Okay, weiter. Let's continue to the Mishnah. Mishnah Samechdal Domud Beis. And the Mishnah, before we start the Mishnah, let me ask you a very, very funny question. What would be the aloha if somebody, and that is discussed, by the way, at the end of the parak, somebody lent you money. Your neighbor lent you money. Your, lend, your neighbor, you really, really needed some hundred shekels for some cash thing for the shalach monos for the rebbe of your child, whatever, hundred shekel, ishtatfus. You need a hundred shekel quick now before your son goes to Cheda or your grandson. And now what? And now you are his balchov. You borrowed from him. Are you allowed to tell him good morning the day later or no? Okay. So let's say, I know, yeah, it sounds very, very funny. Let's say you usually don't tell him good morning. You're spaced out. You don't like him. You're thinking and learning. Shaku all the time. For whichever reason, you usually don't tell him good morning for whichever reason. And then let's say from tomorrow on, you tell him good morning. You say good morning very nicely. Why? Because he lent you money. Is that okay? No, no, no. No, you can decide to say good morning to everybody from now on, maybe. But if the only reason you say good morning is as long as you're Baal Choyv, you feel so indebted to him, and that's why you say good morning, and otherwise, no, yeah, maybe because he votes for the wrong party, I don't know why. You don't say hello, and now you do say hello just because he lent you, that's also. To that extent, we take ribis, and Rabshim Nebar Yoichai says it, and he says it says, yeah, because it says in the Torah, yeah, it says uh, uh, a word that indicates Dovor, even Dibur, even a talk is also to make any, to have any extra verbal ribis, yeah, is also also, it says Neshech called Dovor Asher Yishach. Dovor means thing, and Dovor also means the Dabr, to talk. Even verbal ribis is an Osir. Ad Kedeka. So let's see the following Mishnah, and see how far do we go with that. Says the Mishnah. Amal ve'ez chaveroi, yeah, person lent money to his friend. Lo yodu bechatseroi chinam. Now, the Malve is not allowed to live for free, rent-free, in the Chotzer, let's say, in an apartment of the Loive. He's not allowed to, yeah? In other words, he's going to give him the entire million-dollar loan back, and meanwhile, he's also going to live in his Chotzer rent-free, instead of paying 5,000 shekels for a shoebox meter over meter in Harnov, which the guy usually takes. He's going to live in that shoebox now for a few months without paying anything rent-free, yeah, plus he'll still have to pay the entire amount when the thing comes back, right? He'll get the entire million, the Malve. Meanwhile, he's also living rent free in the Loive's house, in the Loive's apartment. That's not allowed. Okay, seems uh, simple. Yeah, continues the Mishnah. Also, don't even give him a reduction. Instead of 5,000, say, Oh, Mr. Malve, you're such a nice guy. You really saved me when you lent me the million two months ago. Now what? Stay there for I can't give it to you for free. Instead of 5,000, I'll give you 4,000. That's not allowed either. Because that's called ribis. So far, so good, so nice. Okay, very nice. Says the Helige Gemore. But before we start with the Gemara, I want to remind you of what you all learned in Bavekama, Daf Chof, and then Chaf, Daf Chof, and then Chaf Aleph also. The Gemara tells us a, a few uh, cases of Zen Hene Vezeloi Chosil. Remember? What would be if a person is that uh, there are four different um, combinations regarding a person who may or may not live rent free in someone else's house? Let's say a person is ze which means let's say a person enjoys enjoys doesn't mean having fun. A person benefits from rent free living rent free in someone's house, meaning is a regular guy. He's not rich. He doesn't have all kinds of apartments, not even flats anywhere else. He needs a place to rent, young couple. 
they would have to pay the 2,000 or 5,000 somewhere. And now they come and they live in someone's house without permission. And Zechoter, from the side of the, of the owner, yeah, that prelace is not rent free. He would like to rent it out. It's a place which he means he wants to rent out. Says Toysus over there, they're living there and nobody thinks that the place is for rent, right? The young couple is there without asking him. Of course, at the end of the day, he finds out that they lived there. They gained and he lost. Of course, they have to pay through their teeth. They'll have to pay. That's not even a chiddush. They're enjoying it. They're benefiting. And he is losing. Okay. Case the other extreme. The other extreme. Let's say that young couple are very rich. They have their own three different apartments down in Yerushalayim. Yeah, the big daddy, rich guy from wherever. And what? They have three different apartments in Yerushalayim. They happen to like that they stay in someone's apartment without permission, without telling him, but they don't really financially lose from that. Uh, gain from that, excuse me. Gain from that, because they have other places as well. They can pack their bags and live and and live, leave him and live somewhere else that they have. They don't need him, Dafka, or many people would host him in Yerushalayim, because they're son of daughter of Mr. Uh, whoever. And this guy, whom in, the, in his apartment they live, this guy also, that place is not for rent. He's not losing. It's not for rent at all. In other words, it's an empty apartment. He has an empty apartment, which some, sometimes it comes for vacation once in two years, as is very common in Yerushalayim. Some, so they didn't gain financially. He didn't lose financially. They don't have to pay him. If at the end of the day it comes and it kicks them out, retrospectively, retroactively, they don't have to pay anything. Because fina- I don't think they're nice people, but financially speaking, nobody lost, nobody gained here. Now, Tosis points out in Bov uh, Basra, this took in all three Bovis, phew, in the Vebasra, around that, you'd, in Yud, Yud, base, I think, Omud base over there, Yud, base, Omud base, it says over there, Tosa says you're not allowed to do it. You can't enter your, your friend's apartment without permission, even if no financial loss. Because L'Chathchila, it's G'zeila. L'Chathchila, you're not supposed to do such a thing and just barge in without his permission. But L'Achar Maise, they didn't gain, he didn't lose. What about the famous case, which everybody knows, then Henev is Eloi Chosel, Let's say this young couple is really desperate to find a shoebox to rest their heads, yeah, some rat hole to find for 5,000 shekels, and what? And they found someone's house that's empty and just squatted over there. So they are nehene. They're financially benefiting because every month they don't have to pay rent. On, on the other than his side, he's not losing anything because this apartment or the flat is not for free. It's not for rent, I'm sorry. He's not for rent anyways. You know, his old movie comes every 10 years and she died already. In other words, it's not really something that he's losing. So Zen Enev is Elechoser. They gain, he gains the, the, the one, the, 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 um, the guy who's living, yeah, the resident. And Zen Elechoser, the other guy's not Choser. What's Aloha? That's a big debate in Bovekama, right? No questions now. Big debate. And the Aloha is Zen Enev is Elechoser, Potur. The end of the day, yeah, then and although he benefited, yeah, the resident, the one who lives, the tenant, the free tenant, the squatter did actually gain. But since the, the house of the landlord did not actually lose, not nice to do, also to do, but the end that he doesn't have to pay. That's all we have to know now. So the two extreme cases are easy. Yeah, if nobody lost, nobody gained no money. If everybody, if if there was real loss and real gain, of course he has to pay. And the middle case, then and if is a lachoster, one yes, one no. He doesn't have to pay the Eved. No questions unless it's really to the point. Yes. It's... With this in mind, we can start our Gemara. Says the Gemara, Omar of Yosef, Omar of Nachman. Even though they said, now we're talking about the middle case. A person went and lived in his friend's chotzer in his friend's apartment without his knowledge. He just squatted in. He just came in. Doesn't have to pay him. at the end of the month or two or three, doesn't have to pay. Him. When is that? Then in Avamina. Which means Lamaisa, yeah, you didn't lose anything. We gained, you didn't lose. It was not for rent. You didn't know about it, you didn't care about it. Now you're coming asking for money. We don't have to pay you because we didn't gain anything real from that. You have a point, there's a there is a minimum that may have to pay, but not the full rent. They would have paid otherwise two streets away. My rich daddy from wherever has 10 apartments in this town. Okay. 
However, in spite of that, now let's plug it into our sugya. Hilvahu, oh, let's say that young couple, the rich ones, they once, let's say, they lent money to the landlord in the past. Vedar bechatseroi, and they lived in his chotzer. He lives in his chotzer, who the big malve. He's the one living in the apartment now, rent free. Because of the ribis issue, he has to give him sachar. Again, in other words, they don't have other places to be in the Havamin at this point, right? And now, this guy's not missing anything. He's not losing anything because the apartment is not for rent. It's not out to be rented out at all. Now, they were nehene, they did gain from that. Then, if even though usually they don't have to pay, if the person living the tenant is a malve, and now we smell ribis in the air, that's a problem. That's also because that's ribis, even lachar maisa. That's simple. The Gemara, that's very nice. Who's Rabbi Yosef be, uh, quoting Rav Nachman? Is this a Tana or an Amoiro? Amoiro. So now the question is, what's the Chiddush that's coming to tell me? Look at our Mishnah, Tnina. It says in our very own Mishnah, it says, a person who lent his friend money, he should not live in his chotzer for free, as long as he's gaining from that, right? He's gaining something and he is. And don't even lower the rent, lower the, the amount of rent, yeah, the, the monthly rent, don't lower that, don't give reduction, because it's ribis. So why does Rav Nachman have to preach to the choir? Why does Rav Nachman have to reinvent the wheel of or The Mishnah already said that. Answers the Gemara. Answers the Gemara, no. And there are two ways to understand the answer. I'm following Toysfus here at the end. Says the Gemara as follows. Imi Masnisin, had you only read the Mishnah, what would you have thought? Hava Amina, I would have thought. Hani Mili, I would have thought the, chot, the Mishnah talks about the Chotzer de Kaima Agra. It's a chotzer that's meant to be rented out, meaning there's a real loss. You guys were in my apartment for three months, you bunch of, uh, because we are lost. Other people wanted to come in. They couldn't come in because you were holding the place. Right? The chotzer is real kamalagra, mamish lost. The gabba David Lemegar, and you guys have nowhere else to be. You have nowhere else to be. That's the extreme case of yes, loss, and yes, gain, both sides. Avada, in such a case, I would have said, that's ribis. That's a case where you have to pay. Yeah, he lost the owner and they gained the squatters. In that case, of course, I would say if you stayed there for free, mechutzafim, not even mechutzafim. You stayed there, forget about the chutzpah, that's ribis. About it, that's ribis. That's a real deal. It's a real countable business thing. That you, 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 that, that's ribis, you're gaining extra. Ava, now we're jumping to the other extreme. Note what we're doing here. Now we're jumping to the other extreme. Look at that. Ooh, what would be if the Chotzer is not out for rent? He's not losing anything. The Chotzer is ready for Booby who's coming from Los Angeles in two years' time, if she survives, yeah? The Chotzer is not for rent, Bechlal, yeah? And they are rich enough, they have other apartments. So meaning there's no, nothing financial happened here. He didn't lose, they didn't gain. Aim Aloy. I would have said it's not a problem, even if they are the Malve, the rich, and they gave the Alva. I would have said, who cares? I would have said nothing financial happened here. There's no financial gain I gave to who? To the Malve. So maybe that's okay. Hamash Malan. And the Kamash Malan, according to most Rishonim, is not the Mishnah, is Rav Nachman. Comes Rav Nachman and tells me an extra case besides the Mishnah. That even though there's no loss, no gain, no money was kilo virtually transferred here, Bechlal. no money is involved. It's still also to do that because of ribis. My question is, why? Which ribis is there? Lamai said there's no gain, no loss, no nothing. What? Nice, nice, nice. Says Rashi something. What? You both right, but Rashi says like you. Mechzi, it looks like ribis. And Tosis is going to delve into the details. Lamaisa, people know, oh, look, the big rich guy from America, he came to Yerushalayim, now he's the Malve. Ah, he lent him money, and he's staying in his apartment. <laughs> he's staying in his apartment for free. Ah, 
That looks like creepy. So of course he's staying there for free. He even told me when he went to Shimon that he, he's staying there rent-free. Why is he staying there? They don't know all the details. As good yachnes are, they usually don't know all the details. And therefore what? They don't really know that what? They don't know that the whole thing is not really worth anything. But it looks like he's gaining something from his love that that doesn't schmeck right. That doesn't smell nice. And that's already considered as ribis. Now, let me just repeat what I said. The Mishnah is a mechlokis of shoinim. Tosis learns that the Mishnah still talks about what? About real financial case. In the Mishnah, really, there is something that's out to rent. Like the safe of the Mishnah talks about what? Reducing the price. Mashma, it comes with the price, the rent over there. Says Rav Nachman, I extend the Mishnah even further to say, I'm not arguing in the Mishnah, I'm machmir more, that even if there's no financial real thing, not by Halvo, not mitzad the either side, but it looks like he's gaining something, Mimela, that is considered to be a mechzikiribis, and it's bad enough to be osur. Um, okay, yeah. If I understand correctly, how come you've been Okay, answering a question here and um, apologizing. Mm-hmm. Rashi and Tosis both discuss the fact that that there is a difference, of course, whether whether the full amount will be paid, and on top of that, you also have the rent free, or is the rent part of the payment? Yes, very good. Generally speaking, I didn't go into Russian Tosis too much. We learned it. I'm not going down there so much. But Lemaisa, yes. Obviously, if the we are talking over here in what in which case, the person is expecting the entire million back, the lender, right? Plus, on top of that, he's also getting three months rent free, 5,000 shekels. And that's really for sure, right? If you can deduct it from the halva, that's actually not so simple. If you want to be paid by what? By, I'm being paid through the, being there, staying there rent free, that is possibly okay as long as you don't, you know, as long as you don't get one penny paid more than the minimum amount of the alvo. But there are many details in this entire story which will be discussed in a later sugya. But thank you. Let's continue now to the next piece. And this is actually another opinion within Rav Nachman. Ikadamri, some say, in the middle of the line, middle of the line, middle of the page. Ikadamri, some say, another version in Rav Nachman. Amar Yosef Bar Manyumi, Amar Rav Nachman. Rav Yosef Bar Manyumi, quoting Rav Nachman, Afal Pish Sheomu, even though they said, Hadar Bechatzar Chaveros Shalomi Daito, a person who stays in his friend's house without the friend's knowledge, without the landlord's knowledge, Sorch Lalos Loi Sachar, yeah, eh, eh, sorry, Eino Sorch Lalos Loi Sachar, if it's Zen Hene, the Zen Loi Choser, even though he's benefiting, but the landlord is not losing, because the landlord really, is not someone that would rent it out anyways. However, Halveni, note the differences, note the differences, Baruch. Halveni, if it was a prepaid agreement, it was an agreement, be malvit to me, vedur b'chatseri. You know what, hey, Mr. Rich guy, you just came from America to visit, very nice. Halveni, I'm really strapped for cash. I need a million dollar, not much for you. And you know what? I'm straight away telling you, I'll give you back the million dollar in a year when business gets better. And also, you can stay in my nice Harnoff shoebox for the millionaire would not stay in the shoebox. Doesn't make a difference. You can stay in my nice spacious apartment in Ramona Shkol for free for a few months. An extra benefit, an extra, you know, trophy, you know, <laughs> chair on top. Yeah, very nice. Is it nice for you? That is also. They pre-agreed that there was an agreement right from the start. So right away. He has to give him money, and that agreement is straight. He has to give him money for every month that he's renting. Now, oh, so you note the differences. The first version of Nachman was the whole story was not agreed upon. He came, lived in his place, and they were asking, do you or don't you have to pay? You have to pay. This opinion says that you cannot make such an agreement to begin with. Which one is worth? An agreement to begin with at the time of Alva? Or Lachra Maisa, all of a sudden we realize he didn't pay at the end of the day. Obviously, what's worse? An agreement at the beginning. That's Rebis Ketutza. We said it right from the beginning of the parish. Every Rebis that's agreed at the time of the Halva, that's a Doraisa. Okay? Therefore, says the Gemara. The Gemara compares the two versions. Manda Omar Hilvahu, the one who says that he, rent, that he lent him, and in a way that seems to be disconnected, the two parts to the story. A few months ago, rich American guy, there was a transfer of a million dollar loan, right? 
And all of a sudden, he comes to Sukkot Sri Yerushalayim, hmm, happens to be, he stays there, and at the end of the month, he says, it's okay, you don't have to pay such a nice malve. That is more of a Kiddush. Kol Shekain, or the more so, Halveni, or the more so, if there was an agreement of, you, it was like a condition, give me the halva, and you'll stay in my apartment, it was an agreement right from the start, of course it's much worse, right? Because it's more like says Rashi Ribis Ktsutsa. It's an agreed upon Ribis from the start. That's for sure worse. However, the other side, no. However, now it's the reverse case. Uman Domar Halveni. But the one, the opinion that says that the only prohibition is what Halveni, don't set up such a vicious agreement of what? You give me the, the money and you'll get rent free. That's for sure, Osir. Aval Hilvahu Loi. But if the, it happened to be La Chamaisa, if the agreement was, I'm giving you all vo. No agreements, no ribis, no ribis, not even one dime. And then, boom, all of a sudden, he landed from America. And he says, okay. And he stayed there. It wasn't so clearly real that money. At the end of the month, he says, okay, shine. Okay, who needs the money? You're so nice to me. Then, loy, that's not a problem. And maybe he does not have to pay him, according to that opinion. No, and it's not a problem with ribis. My time, why isn't it ribis? Since at the beginning when the agreement started, when Alva took place, he did not actually lend him with this in mind. What Uzbe lent him. Yeah, Yosef is to borrow Uzbe. He did not lend him with this in mind. They really didn't think about the apartment that may be there for free. Lanvo, it's not an issue of ribis. Now, Lamaisa, the Gemara says, the, the Toysus Paskins, and I think that's a local amaisa. The bad news is the Khumra. The first opinion is right. Yeah, not only Halveni, but also Hilvahu Badi Eved. Even if it wasn't agreed upon right from the start, but there was Alva, once the person is the Malva, he cannot get any benefit from the Loiva. And now, the, and he has to pay for that. Very good. Benefit, I mean to say, complimentary for free. There is a big test here which I'd like to share with you, but first I want to finish the Omud, because, you know, I like to have this Omud finish, you know, my, my thing, my hang-up with finishing the Omud. So now, let's finish the Omud, and then Tosas uh, broaches the issue, yeah, how far do you go? You know, I made a good morning, uh, uh, you can't lend anything to anybody. A good morning is a problem, because you never say good morning to people. You go in the Cheder Madrigot like, uh, like that, all of a sudden you say good morning, that's a problem. But if it's something you do anyways, yeah, and here, don't you do it anyways? Don't you let people stay in your apartment anyways for free? That's a question. How far do you go with not doing any toivas, any favors, any benefits for free to the Malve? Tosis is going to discuss that, and I'd like to see the Tosis inside. But first, let's continue, because Tosis also quotes the Gemara later on. So we have to get more information, and then you can go to Tosis. Says the Gemara, story time, story time, story time about Avodim. Rav Yosef Bar Chama. Rav Yosef Bar Chama, Takit used to, um, not attack, used to hold, take hold of Avdi, of slaves, the Inchi, the Masik, the Uzuzi. In other words, people would owe money to Rav Yosef Bar Chama, yeah? And Rav Yosef Bar Chama sees that people don't pay him on time. They have money. So as means of pressure, or maybe as means of payment, he would just chap the avodim, chap the ozeret, chap the slave, chap the servant, yeah? And tell him, now you clean my floor. Either he wants to be paid back, you know, or he wants to pressurize them to pay back later. Yeah, but Lamai says, using the Avodim. Okay, very nice. I just want you to know one thing before we start, to avoid a big question. Asada Shulchan Aruch here, Shulchan Aruch says, he only attacked them. And by the way, the other Gemara in Bobim Kama, Dafsa Zayin, talks about not him, it's other people in his household who did it for him, not he himself, Yeah. He got his people to get the avodim, bring them to his house, and tell them, now you wash the floor, now you change the baby. So now, the idea is, he did not do it while they were working. Let's say the avodim made a day off, or an hour off, or just sitting with their coffee, not doing anything, you know, sitting there, sprawled with this, and then he would chaff them and tell them, now you do my job, because your owner owes me money. Okay, okay, uh -oh, we're probably going to get there. Very, yes, yes, yes. Omer le Rove Bre, Rove, the son of Rabbi Yosef Barchama, asked him, by time of Ovid Marhachi, why are you doing this? Mar is in third person. He spoke to him respectfully to his father, but he asked his father, Daddy, why are you doing this? In other words, it could be an issue of what? Of maybe Xela. 
Yeah, forget about ribis. Maybe it's gzela because the owner doesn't allow you to use the the eved, and you're doing work for the eved that you're not supposed. To. It's not your eved. Omar Lay, so he told him, "I'm not stealing anything." I know. I Rav Nachman Svirli. I think like Rav Nachman. I hold like Rav Nachman. What did Rav Nachman say? Dama Rav Nachman. Avda, a slave, Nehoim Kreise Loishovi. He's not even worth the Nehom, the Neham, the bread of his stomach. In other words, the Avodim are, not, are so lazy by nature, they're not even worth the money, the food that they get. And says Rashi, I feed them. On that day, did they do my sponge and change my babies and do my, and fix my, I don't know, my stuff, my phone, then all that time I feed them. So my said, we come even. It's not like I gained anything here. Yeah, we break even. I give them a nice meal. And that don't work more than the worth the meal. I mean, my question is, why would people keep slaves if it's not financially worth it? But the Gemara has a better question. The Gemara says, Omer Lay now answers the son to the father. Rova is answering of Yisro Barachama. Eimu, the Omer of Nachman. It's true that Rav Nachman said that the Vodim are very lazy. And if you feed them, you just break even. That's true. Kigon Dari, Avde. That's only true about Dari. Dari was the name of the slave of who? Of Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman himself had a slave called Dari, that he was a big lazy guy, he was a lazy bum. The market Bay Kuvi, he was a bar dancer. He would go and he would be danced by the by the poor people, drink by the Kuvi, by the Chanuyos. He would go and dance like this, the Gemara says with the heads. He would be like a guy, he's a lady guy, or he's a, he's a guy who doesn't do much, he doesn't stay home, he goes around the pubs in town. So that guy is not worth anything, and if you feed him, you're doing him a toivo. But Avdi Achrini, but other slaves, there are slaves that are very industrious and very, you know, very what are diligent. Avdi Achrini, me Omar, did he speak about all different avodim? No, some avodim they work very hard, they do the sponge very well, you know, they do they do the diapers, they do the stuff, and very nice. So why do you say that they're all at slonim? Maybe you are gaining something. You're feeding them, uh, I don't know, forty shekels a day, and they give you two hundred. Is that gazela? What's going on? Why are you doing this? Omar Le, he said no. I'm not causing any loss to the Bible. Why? I know. I. He heard the Rav Daniel Bar Rav Ktina Omar Rav Svioli. I think like the opinion of Rav Daniel Bar Rav Ktina b'shem of Rav. What did he say? The Omar. He says as follows: A tokif avdi shel chaveroi, a person who takes hold of his friend's slave, the also by melacha, and he used him for work. Yeah, he took the slave from the owner's house and told him, "Hey, Mister Dari Shmari Bari, whoever your name is." Today, you're working by me, and you do my floor for today. That's actually something that should not bother Bichlal, the original owner. Why? The Nihale, it's good for the owner of the, or the real owner of the Eved, it's good for him, the Loinistri Avde, that his Eved should not be spoiled. What's Listor with the Taf? To demolish, to destroy. He doesn't want his Eved to be spoiled, to destroy his good middles, which means. The, uh, the, the masters like it that they're avodim on their day off the work, it shouldn't get, shouldn't become too atzlonim, they didn't have an official day off by the way, I'm misusing uh, it's a bit of a misnomer over here the avodim would sneak out and you know drink and do and laze around and therefore it's good for the owner as long as his own avid is off duty, to go out and do other work, otherwise they become too atzlonim they become too lazy, so it's good for the owner that the avid is doing something so I'm Lemaise gaining. I'm getting my floor done. And the, and the owner is not losing anything. Why? The owner is what? Anyhow, has nothing to do with Evid today. Secondly, the Evid is only getting his muscles working. It doesn't become a lazy bum. So Lemaise, it's a very good deal. Very nice. Yes. That's what, but. Yes. No, it's not Zen they're not mamish nehene. No, I hear what you're saying. Lemaisa, no, he's ne- No, he took away the evid. No, you can't say it's nehene. The evid is taken away, but he's not so sad that the evid is away because he knows the evid is in the training course. The evid is in the gym now. So it's okay. We even doubt. But now comes the big question. Now comes the expected question from the son to the father. And that's a punchline. Omar Lei, Samechem, with all the top of the page, says Rove to his father. Hanimili, that is true. Echadilomasik Bezuzi. Ah. Then in Evazelchosa to say, I'm gaining, I'm getting my money back through the Avodi washing my floor, doing my uh, washing, I don't know, scraping the, the walls for Pesach. That is very nice. The other guy's not losing. When what? The Lamasik Bezuzi. When you are not a person that charges money, you're not a Malve, Mar, but you, Father, 
came the Masik Biuzuzi, because you do have what? You do have a debt by them, meaning they owe you money, Mechzi Keribis. That looks like Ribis. Now you see the first Lakrashi, the problem of Mechzi. Because people don't know, know, always know the exact agreement and everything. People know that you, Rav Yosef Barchama, lent money. They see the evidence of the other guy working by you. It looks like Ribis. As we just said, Omar Rav, Nachman, repeating what we said before. Even though they said a person lives in his friend's chotzer without his knowledge, without his consent, normally, in which case, in Koshiken, by the way, both cases, nevertheless, you'll vow, oh, once you land, it changes everything. Once the illegal squatter who's benefiting, not benefiting, he's there, Lamaisa in the Chotzer, people usually don't give the Chotzer for free, and you're there for free, funny, 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 but Darbe Chatzeroi, you live there, Tzorich Lalois Lesachar, you see that he has to give him Sachar because it looks like Ribis, even though there's no real financial gain here in any direction, but it looks like there is real Sachar going on over here, then it's also. Omar Lay, the father said to the son, Hadribi, I regret what I did. And he changed because what his son told him. Because really, although usually it's okay, but the event, but as we see, by the way, this wasn't agreed upon at the beginning. What do we see from here? We see halacha is more mechudash, like the first lishna. Not only if it was a pre-agreement right from the start of the alva, there was not agreement over here, right? So and so, Mr. Evid owner borrowed money from who? From Rav, not from uh, Rav Yosef Barchama, right? And Rav Yosef Barchama, one sunny day, got hold and chopped Evid to do his panja in his house, right? So we see what? We see it wasn't agreed upon right from the start. But since at the end of the story, people see, oh, he got the Evid rent free, got the Evid for free, and he's a lender, doesn't schmeck right. Shmeks like ribis, looks like ribis, and talks like ribis, and therefore midura bon on its also like ribis, and you're not allowed to do that. And really, Rav Yosef regretted what he did, and he would not do it again. Now, if we have time, we'll see Torah first, but I leave room for questions now as well. If not, we'll see Torah tomorrow. Yes, I'm with you. Let's summarize. Let's summarize and get things right over here. We saw the aloha, and that's the aloha, that if somebody lent money to his friend, okay, now the lender needs a place to stay. Maybe doesn't even desperately need a place to stay. He has 10 other places in Yerushalayim, okay, wherever it is. And he still chooses to stay without the knowledge, without the agreement, pre-agreement of the who, of the, of the landlord. The landlord is the borrower, right? He's not allowed to stay there rent-free, True. Because even though it was not agreed upon, and it's not Ribis Doraisa, Ribis Doraisa is only if you agreed this right from the start. This was something Lacher Maisa. At the end of the month, they'll like scratch their heads. Ah, you stayed in my house. Oh, naim. Mm. You stayed by me. I'm not going to take rent from you because you're a big Mr. Malve. That's Ribis. That's Ribis. Says very nicely, Baruch. Baruch is right. You say what? Give him the money. It's reversible. What should be done? We don't have to say Hashem Bagad. No, all you have to do, maybe he has. But your main thing is, like Rebbe Lozer, you now have to give rent. Who? You. Renter. Illegal renter slash Malve. Give him the free. Give him the 5,000 shekels for the tiny place. Okay, good. Now comes what? Comes another story equivalent to that. And that is, instead of living in an apartment, switch that to using the slave. Not that the slave was in an apartment. In, that's another case altogether. The Malve was a very chosh of Amoira. Yeah, it was a race of Rachama. He lent money to someone, then without the knowledge or permission, used the evidence, and he found out to be okay. He has to be pressurized, the loyve sometimes, yeah? And therefore, the loyve is now giving him something extra. Why? Even though he doesn't really need it, or zenin of the let's say. The other side, at least, was not choser. They're not missing the evidence. The happy the evidence is using his day off to work more. Nevertheless, at the end of the day, because it's mechzik it looks like ribis, the equivalent, the case of the apartment, is a case of using the slave, and even though it wasn't agreed upon from the start, but at the end of the day, when you when you count the dollars and cents, at the end of the year, he will ask for the million dollar loan. Plus, there was also what some I don't know two or three days of avodim working, 
That's ribis. But the Eved, Medorabonon, makes the Karibis. He's not really gaining anyways because he could have whatever or, or the other guy didn't lose. The end of the day, it's also because it's makes the Karibis, looks like ribis. That's it. If he reduces a million, it could be better and that's a different discussion. And that discussion Rosh Hashim Okay, I would yes start the Toysvist, Breshul Let's just start the Toysvist and I want to go into it Blinader tomorrow. You see, I'm going so nice and slow. The last Toysvist in Daf Samech Dalet Domut Beis is as follows. Yeah, the Toysvist says like this. Yeah, it says, Abel Chotzer de Loka Amele Agra, the Gavad Elob and the Mega, Ema Loi Kamash Melan. Okay, last Toysvist in the page. Kay Lish Nakama says Toysvist, I Paskin, like this Lish Nakama, I just told you. Like the Machmir Loshrim, that even if he was not pre agreed upon at the beginning, it's still Osir. The Afilu Hilvau Osir, even with the Evid, Kaimalan, Kidmucha Chobe Mine Besomuch, as Rabba later on says about the case of the slave. The Hashta Kosher. Now it's difficult, says Toysa. Says Toysa, I don't know what's going on over here. The Odom Shemalvel Chaveroi, a person who lent his friend money, the he also lasts us Lashum Tova Shibailon. Can't he do any favor in the world whatsoever? Can't you, your neighbor lent you ten shekels? You can't, you know, lend him any more the the drill. Can't lend him a bag of milk, you know, even without so so. Let me buy dvorim she'en regilus lashil chinam. Let's say there are things which you usually don't give for free. Kigon bais or isus a house or a horse. You don't give for free. Usually your house rent free or your horse or your Mitsubishi or your Porsche. You don't give it rent free. The koyetz ben the osu lashil malve. Then I understand you can't give the malve. Why? Even if you love him so much, let's say you would have given your house anyways. Now remember, here's the difference with the good morning case. When you say good morning to your friend, and you always say good morning before the Dalvo, the, the, after Dalvo, the doesn't look like ribis, right? True? Doesn't look like ribis. Over here, even though I would have given him the house for free anyways, but now that he lent me money, to give the house is a big thing, yeah? So it looks like what? I would have given it to him anyways, even without Dalvo. Maybe to give it to him now, after Dalvo, maybe that looks like Ribis. Okay, that I can tolerate, because it looks like Ribis, because now there was Dalvo. It's more than a good morning. It's a house. Impressive. Yes. Good. Yes. Ella, but, but Tess is still asking, really, why? What really is the difference? I feel it from Shogilashilchinam Let's say things which you always give for free to people, you lend for free. You never rent it for money. Yeah, normal guy is not a gemach guy for rent. You know, you lend your, your drill, you lend your, I don't know, a chair, some funny old plastic chair. How miserly can you be not to give it to a neighbor of Hashem Brachas for free and get it back? You're a human being, even going do that. Yeah, yeah, Osir. Is that really Osir? At the end of the day, we're saying that there's nothing financial here. Let's remove all the drama over here. At the end of the day, this apartment is like a plastic chair. Why? It's a fancy apartment in Mamila, but if he didn't gain anything, because he has 10 apartments in Mamila, and I'm the owner, and I don't give it for free, it's there just, you know, for the decor, then what? At the end of the day, nothing financial happened, but it looks so creepy. So be Magdir. Where do you finish? Where do you end that Mechdi? Yeah? Even to rent a, to rent. To lend a bag of milk or a chair, where's the where's the end of the story? Answers to us is one answer. Thank you for staying over time. The Yeshloima answers to us. This gives an interesting Hagdora. Not all you show him agree. The Dafka Bemil de Farhesia the Avsha Tuva, something public. Avsha is there's a lot of voice, a lot of noise about it. What? Call. It's called call in the Loshana Koidesh. In other words, a lot of people will talk about the fact that the lender just landed from America, excuse the pun. And he's now getting rent free from the lender, from the borrower. Ooh, that's big news. Because when somebody stays in a place, people know, is it rented? Is it bought for free? Ah, 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 ah. That's a very, you know, well-known thing. Osar hocha kuli hai. To that extent, he answered it, even though it's without money. Kegon lodo bechatser v'litkov be'avdoi. Now, litkov be'avdoi, everybody knows that this Eved belongs to Reuven and not to Shimon. Ah, there was a law. Ah, an Eved. Everybody sees the Eved washing the floor in the wrong house. Aval, says Toysvus. Lashi lo kelev oisusoi. And Toysvus in a different place, even a horse. A horse is expensive. But because the Suss is not so famous, it's not so well known that one guy rented, I don't know why, I don't ride horses, I actually do sometimes. It's not such a well-known thing that Reuven using Shimon's horse, apparently, 
I guess it's like a motorcycle, a simple one. Mutter, that's a lot. Because it's not such a well-known thing, it's not the talk of town, plus adds toys first, you have to remember the other condition. You would have given him the horse for free or the drill for free anyways. Yeah, Two conditions. A, you're not doing it only because he lent you. You would have done it anyways, before or after the loan, regardless of the loan. Plus, it's not a talk of town. People don't know, don't think say twice, are you riding this horse, the other horse? Therefore, that's allowed. Which means, says, that's what the Mishnah Dafka spoke about an apartment, a house. The Chotzer didn't speak about Kalim. Why, why is the Mishnah getting so dramatic? To tell me that if this was something less famous, less well-known, such as lending a drill, even the biggest yachne in the world, I think, does know everyone in town who lent who a drill. You have to be very professional, really, and to, yeah, so Mimela, most people don't know if I lent a drill or I lent a plastic chair. It's not such a well-known thing. And therefore, if I would have done it anyways, the second condition, that's okay. but the although every year the guy stays by him for free. And I do it anyways. But now there was a loan, and people know there was a loan. Now that's already looks doesn't look nice, even though they've done it anyways, and he's not gaining anything, but because it's an Av Shamilsa, it's a call, it's a well-known thing. Mainly it's us, sir. Thank you very much. It's Loch Rabbe Bechol and Yonim. I hope tomorrow to get back to normal with the daf and everything. Thank you, everybody, for your participants. Everyone at Torah Anytime and YouTube. Thank you. Bye-bye.